This country was founded on the radical idea that we are created equal and endowed by our creator with in, inalienable rights. And yes, we have a long way before we fully live up to those values. It is for this reason precisely that we have to take action when a president is openly violating the oath he took to the Constitution of the United States and the core values we aspire to. As Martin Luther King said, all we say to America is, be true to what you say on paper. I believe this is a pivotal moment in our country. The eyes of history is watching us. Right now, the president is carrying out mass deportation raids across this country in each one of our districts. Right now, the president is committing human rights abuses at the border, keeping children in cages and having human beings drinking out of toilets. This president, who has been credibly accused of committing multiple crimes, including colluding with foreign government to interfere with our election. This is a president who has overseen the most corrupt administration in our history and pursued an agenda to allow millions of Americans to die from a lack of health care while he transfers millions of dollars in tax cuts to corporations. This is a president who has said, grab women by the pussy. This is a president who's called black athletes sons of bitches. This is a president who has called black people who come from black and brown countries shitholes. This is a president who has equated neo-Nazis with those who protest against them in Charlottesville. This is a president who has openly violated the very value our country aspires to uphold. Equality under the law, religious liberty, equal protection, and protection from persecution. And to distract from that, he's launching a blatantly racist attack on four duly elected members of the United States of House of Representatives all of whom are women of color. This is the agenda of white nationalists. Whether it is happening in chat rooms or it's happening on national TV, and now it's reached the White House garden. He would love nothing more than to divide our country based on race, religion, gender, orientation, or immigration status, because this is the only way he knows he can prevent the solidarity of us working together across all of our differences. The only way to prevent us confronting the problems our country is facing, whether it is health care, climate change, student debt, or our endless wars. This is his plan to pit us against one another. This is how he can continue to enrich his friends and distract us from the detrimental policies that his administration is pushing forth. So we can either continue to enable this president and report on the bile of garbage that comes out of his mouth, or we can hold him accountable to his crimes. We can continue to turn a blind eye of the multiple crimes he's accused of. We can stand while he violates peace people's basic human rights and the responsibility, the, the responsibility that his administration has for the deaths of children on our border, or we can take action. I have not made impeachment central to my election or my tenure, but since the day that I'd gotten elected, I'd said to people, it is not how, if he will be impeached, but when. So it is time for us to stop allowing this president to make a mockery out of our constitution. It's time for us to impeach this president. So now 
Um, we're going to have um, uh, Alexandria Ocasio, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll try to keep things as brief, I guess, as I can. But who knows when I get on a roll, right? Um, when I was a little girl, my father took me to the reflecting pool here. We were on a road trip from New York to Florida to visit family. And I've told this story before, but it was my first time ever visiting Washington, D.C. And it was my only time visiting Washington, D.C. for years, if not decades. And he rested me on the side of the reflecting pool and had my toes dip in the water. And he had me look at the Washington Monument, he had me look at the Capitol, had me look at the entirety of the capital of our, of our great country. And he looked at everything and he pointed to all of it and he said, this belongs to all of us. This belongs to you and it belongs to me. And so the first note that I want to tell children across this country is that no matter what the president says, this country belongs to you. Mm -hmm. And it belongs to everyone. And today, that notion, that very notion was challenged. This weekend, that very notion was challenged. So I am not surprised when, a, when the president says that four sitting members of Congress should, quote, go back to their own country when he has authorized raids without warrants on thousands of families across this country. I am not surprised that he used, uses the rhetoric that he does when he violates international human rights and takes thousands of children away from their families. I am not surprised that he has turned our public education system under the leadership of Betsy DeVos into a cash cow to enrich himself and his friends. I am not surprised when he corrupts via the Secretary of Transportation. I am not surprised at what he's doing. But I also know that we're focused on making it better because we don't leave the things that we love. And when we love this country, what that means is that we propose the solutions to fix it. We love all people in this country, and that's why we believe health care is a human right. We, we love all children in this country, and because we do, that's why we fight for education for all children through college. And so we'll stay focused on our agenda and we won't get caught slipping because all of this is a distraction. It's a distraction from what's most important and from our core values as American citizens. And with that, I'll hand it over to Rashida Tlaib. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to my sisters in service. Thank you all so much for being here. As we all know, the recent tweets and words from the president are simply a continuation of his racist and xenophobic playbook. We cannot allow these hateful actions by the president to distract us from the critical work to hold this administration accountable to the inhumane conditions at the border that is separating children from their loved ones and caging them up in illegal, horrific conditions. I represent the third poorest congressional district in this country, one that is made of working people who have been targeted by this administration and their actions and words are hurting them today. I was elected to fight for them, fight for the 13 congressional district. They sent me here to Congress to fight back against the corporate assault and the corruption in our country. This means supporting an impeachment inquiry of this president and his actions by the uh, administration and his appointees. Sadly, this is not the first nor will it be the last time we hear disgusting, bigoted language from the president. We know this is who he is and we know that he and his administration are constantly engaged in actions that harm residents and American people in our country. Many members of Congress have called for his impeachment because of his utter disregard and disrespect of the United States Constitution. And despite this and other many attempts to distract us, I remain focused, we remain focused on holding him accountable to the laws of this land and accountable to the American people. I heard, urge House leadership, many of my colleagues, to take action to impeach this lawless, 
president today.